so many different players have scored for Chelsea now. And we did say that they lack that sort of classic number nine. But maybe Graham Potter's going to do things differently and have the goals coming from all over the park. Well, that, listen, in, in football, it's good to have a, a few sources of where your goals come from. I feel that if you can get it right across the whole field and everyone's mucking in and chipping in, then it makes, takes the pressure off the striker. Now, the striker, yeah, his main job is to score goals, but at the same time, it'll be nice to see some of the other players score goals and him being in, and, and then you being involved in some of the build-up play as well sometimes. But when I'm looking at how um, Chelsea has set up, they're geared up to score goals from all types of, part, well, all types of parts of the pitch, and um, they've got goal scorers. When I, I actually met with uh, Graham Potter last year um, at the, the end at of Brighton, when yeah. he was at Brighton, I asked him about strikers and how, how he sees his strikers because I, I couldn't understand the way that he wanted his strikers to play. And he said he allows them to have freedom to play to what they believe yeah. that their strengths are. So if you think your, your, your best strength is to come short, he's happy for you to do that. If he thinks your, your strength is to run the channels, he's happy for you to do that. So I, I found that extremely strange that there isn't a a mould or a way or a certain yeah, so certain way that he wants his striker right. to yeah. play. And because Brighton used to get in so many positions and, there, score, there wasn't, yeah. and they weren't the putting the ball up. in a box. Yeah. And I, I always thought, right, maybe he needs somebody who's just going to be in that 18-yard box that's just going to be a Jermaine Defoe. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. care but about out, anybody else, out out. just want to score. But that takes a lot away from the, the what goes on in his build-up play as well. So if you can get the balance right, so you can have a goal scorer and a, a, and a player that can come to feet, very comfortable in the half turn, and make create play as well, then he's onto something. But if you're saying what he's saying there, well, that's, that's quite strange to yeah. me, yeah, because that will, that will tell a lot on who's going to be playing up front for him. You'll probably look at Jao Felix, how he played today, and he, he looks very um, pr progressive. He looks like he wants to go and score goals. So he, if he's going to just allow him to do that and just do that and concentrate on that, then it's only going to be bode well for Chelsea. At the same time, when you look at it as well, <laughs> if I had a manager that said, listen, Coley, go and do what you want, yeah? Mm. And obviously, at the same time, I want to just score goals, but I did, I did like the build-up play of it. But if I'm focusing on too much of the build-up play, like when you look at Mope, yeah. Mope last season for Brighton, and obviously he was under... Potter, he didn't score a lot of goals, but then like, he's probably if he's not being asked to just listen, concentrate on just the goal and the finishing, then he's not going to do that. And that's what yeah. I thought was strange, though. Yeah. What, if if that was the, the element that was missing, that whole Brighton team be in the box, don't don't get joint, don't join up in that yeah, yeah. that build-up play, yeah, just stay in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but, but he was we'll, happy we'll, for them to we'll do see how this Chelsea team develops. It looks yeah. like that they got um, someone in Jao Felix. Now Kai Havertz is going to get involved in the action as well because he's going to look at it and think, well, Jao Felix can drop off and he can get in behind. So they're going to have to, they've got someone to build off. Yeah, and that's, that's 12 different Chelsea players who've scored so far this season.